everybody. I'm Amanda Haas. Welcome back to my backyard if you've been watching these Traeger Lives. I'm so excited to be back with you today. We're doing one of my favorite topics and it's all gonna be about game day. But if you don't know me, I am a cookbook author and recipe developer and of course a Traeger Pro Team member. And that came about because I was the culinary director at Williams Sonoma for about seven years. And I was introduced to my first Traeger grill when I was there and asked to test it and see what I thought of it. And I automatically fell in love with it and the rest is history. And so, you know, a lot of us are known for great barbecue, barbecue or cooking wild game on our Traegers. And me, I just like to tell people I cook everything on it. So I tend to cook healthier and a lot of my cookbooks tend to be about healthier foods that make you feel great. But today we are leaning into game day in a major way and we are gonna have a blast with it. So I'm making three recipes for us today. Lofty, but we're gonna get through it. I'm making a taco skillet dip, which is basically like tacos that you can turn into nachos and scoop up with things. Perfect for game day. I'm also making my version of a French onion dip and once you try it, I promise you, you will never buy the packaged stuff again. Roasting your onions on your Traeger makes all the difference in the world and it is so easy. And then last up, we're gonna do a spinach artichoke dip, which is just super classic, ooey gooey, cheesy deliciousness. The best part is that all three of these can be prepped in advance. And so when you're ready to start the game, you can either throw, throw them in the Traeger, throw them on the Traeger to heat them up, or wait and course them out throughout the day. So I'm so excited to get started with you. But before I do, I mentioned game day and that we're doing a ton of fun things around Traeger for the next few weeks around game day. So if you haven't seen everything on Instagram and Facebook, please check it out on the Traeger feed. But I'm so excited to be doing a giveaway with you all today. And it is to support one of my favorite organizations. Since it's Breast Cancer Awareness Month, we are partnering with our friends at B4BC, which is an awesome organization that supports women going through different phases of breast cancer. And I was lucky enough to work with them last year and go cook for this group of amazing women. So what are we giving away? We are giving away to 10 lucky winners those awesome Traeger flags that you've seen. And then there's a special t-shirt that has been developed for this month, uh, partnering with B4BC, made by the incredible artist, Hannah Eddy. And we'll be giving away 10 of those too. And you all know, anytime we release something, like a small amount, they go like in no time, like hotcakes, as we say. So um, you will be so lucky and you'll get a version of that t-shirt, which is so cool. So. In order to try to win, you have to listen really hard to what I'm doing today because I have a trivia question at the end and it's not easy. So we'll see how it goes, right? So pay attention as I cook. As always, if you have questions as I go, you can ask them, type them into Facebook and our social media team will be telling me and I'll be trying to answer as many as I can while I cook. If I don't get to you during the Facebook Live, I can certainly try to take a few at the end and we always try to get back to you with important questions afterwards. You're also welcome, welcome to DM me at Amanda Haas Cooks on Instagram with any cooking questions. I really do try to get back to everybody. So let's kick it off with this skillet, taco skillet dip we're calling it. I wanted to call it taco nacho skillet dip, it's a mouthful. But I started by already doing the first couple steps on the grill so we could skip forward. So let me show you what that looks like. And so I started by browning some red onion and some Snake River Farms ground beef here, which I don't know if you know as well. I think that we have a discount if you want to purchase Snake River Farms meat right now. I think it's 15% off anything over $99, which is so awesome. So such high quality meat they're producing and we're huge fans of their products. So thank you Snake River for this. But all I did was saute some red onion and then I added two pounds of ground beef. Um, I like to go big on this because I'm usually feeding a crowd and game day at my house involves a lot of teenagers. And it's been one of our only joys left and a fun way to get my kids excited about doing something since there's so little we could do in the world right now. 
They both play fantasy football like maniacs, and they have their group of friends they're allowed to see. And so I do this a lot. This is my one way to entertain for them. And so what I love about all of these dips is that they're a lot easier to do than when you're trying to do something on the spot. I did wings the other day and I made 150 wings. <laughs> yes, I've got many triggers, but they were gone in five minutes. It was hilarious. And so with these dips, I hope at least they'll last a little bit longer and serve a larger crowd, okay? So one of the coolest things about this recipe is that you do this step and then you add everything else at once and let it cook. So I've got fire roasted tomatoes, which I think really enhance the flavor of everything we're doing here. And it's kind of like cooking them on a Traeger in the first place, right? So you get a little bit of a smokier flavor, which I really like. And like I said, I'm making this recipe for a huge crowd. And so I'm doing two cans of the two 15 ounce cans of fire roasted tomatoes. And then I've got, I'm laughing because there's a bee here. I've already been stung once this week. I don't, let's just say it's, um, it, are we going to call it good luck if I get stung again? But I'm just saying it's not going to happen. <laughs> so now I've got some of those hatch green chilies, just really mild chilies that I'm adding. If you like that, you can add them. You don't have to, but I really enjoy them. And we're going to mix that in. And then we've got black beans. Now you can use any kind of beans that you like. These are canned and they, um, they might have a little salt, not a lot. And I like to get them out of the can and rinse them and drain them. So it gets off all that extra starch and you really just get back down to the beans, you know? So this is two 15 ounce cans of black beans too. So already cooked, rinsed and drained. We're gonna just pour them on in, nice and easy like that. And remember, if you have questions for me, you are welcome to ask and I will try to get to all of you. Okay, so here's the cool ingredient that we don't do a lot of on the Traeger, and it's why I wanted to show it to you, is that we're going to cook rice in here. And the beauty of this recipe is that it's not only like a dip, but it's a one-pot dinner anytime you want it. And just wait till you see what I'm going to serve with it for scooping. So I'm just going to sprinkle the rice in, and we're going to need a little bit more liquid. Oh, now there are two bees. They're really playing with fire, aren't they? No pun intended. So I'm going to scoop those in. I'm going to add a cup of water. In you go. I am loading up this pan, but the coolest part is once it's cooked through, it just comes right up to the top and we're going to add the cheese at the end and it's going to be amazing. Do you think I can keep a straight face if I do get stung by a bee and um, not curse like I did the other day? <laughs> I was out on a nature trail by myself and I screamed at the top of my lungs and I started laughing so hard because if someone heard me, they would have died. Okay, I'm just going to get a little bit of foil to cover this up. And one other thing I want to do is that we already put taco seasoning in this with the ground beef and the onion. And I just buy taco seasoning. Um, this is a simply organic one I buy, Southwest taco seasoning mix that I really like. It's pretty mild, right? So it's got really nice chili flavor, but it's not like in your face spicy. But you can use whatever you like. And I just use a pack of this. So, you know, available at any market. Whatever kind you like is great but I'm just doing an extra splash of seasoning before I put on the foil. Because the thing with rice, of course, is that you need to have a tight lid on it or foil to make sure that it steams and cooks through well. And you want it kind of buried into the other ingredients, okay? Let me grab that. I'm trying to hide all my good food from the bees, but they don't care. Okay, so I have two sheets of foil. Obviously, you want to be careful because the pan's hot but you want to wrap it up really tightly so the steam can't escape. And then we're going to cook it for about 25 to 30 minutes like this. And the beauty of this recipe is that if you wanted to cook it all the way through like this and take it off, you can. You can let it sit all day, half a day, and then put the cheese on it at the end and you've got a great recipe for everybody to enjoy during the games. So as I put this on, I'm going to take off another ingredient from the next recipe we're going to do. Okay, wow. Looks like we have a question and I'll answer it as soon as I put these down and share with you. These are caramelized onions for the French onion dip I was talking about. What is our first question? Do you ever use fresh tomatoes in this recipe? 
oh, do I ever use fresh tomatoes in that recipe? You absolutely could. And if you grow them, amazing. If you wanted to grill them or even like put a little smoke on them, right? You could do that first. I would probably peel the skins off though, just because you don't want them all like, you don't want the skin kind of like breaking into the other bites or don't just do what you like. But fresh tomatoes, amazing. There's nothing better than a fresh, good tomato. So you're welcome to try that. Anything else? Any other questions right now? I used, did I use basmati? I used basmati rice and you can use, I just do any um, grain rice that cooks in about 15 to 20 minutes, you know? So some of them take longer. Uh, brown rice tends to take a little bit longer. So I'm going for speed on this, <laughs> on this one so we can all enjoy it quickly. And like I said, it transfers to a great weeknight meal. And so when I'm in a hurry and I don't have much time to cook, it's perfect for that. I want to show you these onions because they're so gorgeous and caramelized. Uh, this was three pounds of onions, which equal to about 10 cups when I sliced them. And I actually did them in a food processor. You could do them by hand. It's hard work, right? But I like to get them really thin because they cook faster and then they kind of just like melt, 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 melt into the dip. And so I don't want to use these right away. They need to cool a little bit. So let me put these in a bowl to cool, and then we'll move on to the spinach artichoke dip. See how tricky we are? We're doing it all at once. It's all about the timing. Oh my gosh, but these smell amazing. It's such a bummer with COVID that I can't share this food with people that aren't in my tight little circle, but the ones who are in it are pretty lucky. <laughs> this is like one of, I could just eat all of that by itself. So good. All right, so let's get this out of the way. And, I think we only need a few ingredients here. I'll be right back as I'm stepping out, right? We're going to move these over and show you a couple more tricks. Uh, we have another question. Sure, absolutely. Oh, what is the temp of my Traeger? And by the way, I'm cooking on an Ironwood 885, which I've been using this for all our lives. And frankly, I use it probably 90% of the time. And I'm cooking at 350, but I'm so glad you said that because I'm gonna crank it up to 400. And I tested these recipes between 350 and 400, and I found that most of them did really well at 400 degrees. And I know that sounds really hot if you're used to cooking on medium, medium high, but when you have to open the lid to the Traeger and things drop down, I think things do really well at a higher temperature. So all of these dips, you could do at 400 degrees, okay? Let's just keep it simple and even, it's really good. Okay, let me get my other ingredients. Any other questions while I bring this out? Oh, what's my favorite dip to bring to a party? That's a great question because I love bringing dips to parties because then you don't have to do any work while you're there, right? And you can just enjoy your friends. So I love, well, I love this French onion one because people can't believe how simple it is. When I show you what's in it, you're gonna be like, that's all it takes. But I also love, there's a, I do a riff on this spinach artichoke dip and it's got goat cheddar, which might sound a little strange, it's so delicious. And it's kind of a healthier version of what I'm making today. But people are always blown away by the flavor. So it's a lot of spinach, it's got the goat cheddar, and it just has less of the fatty ingredients that we're gonna use today. So I like it because people are always really pleasantly surprised by how delicious it is. Okay, let's get our ingredients out for the artichoke dip. Okay, this is, Honestly, the other thing I love about the three recipes I'm making is that they're so simple. And cooking doesn't have to be hard or have a ton of ingredients to taste great, right? So it's really important to me that people learn that it doesn't have to take a lot of time. It doesn't have to cost you a lot of money. And you don't have to be like a crazy skilled cook with using a million ingredients to make wonderful food, okay? So I've got this, I've got that. Let me get all of the cheeses that we need. This is so good, you're gonna just Got our spinach and artichoke, garlic, and I think that's it. We get one other bowl for the cheese. We're gonna just mix it in this. Nope, here we go, here we go. Okay, so what have we got here? The recipe calls for room temperature cream cheese and some mayonnaise, I think a half cup of mayo and a stick of cream cheese. 
What it doesn't say is that the cream cheese should be really soft. Otherwise, if you try to mix this by hand, it's really hard to do and it doesn't really get to come together and it's lumpy. So I realized yesterday that if you have a stand mixer or a food processor, use it. Just combine those first two ingredients and mix it really quickly. And then you can keep it in the refrigerator like this. But if you have the patience to make sure that you soften it first, that's great because then the cream cheese and the mayonnaise can come together at room temperature really easily for you, okay? So that's just those two things combined. And here's where it's gonna get really delicious. I have four kinds of cheeses. I have Fontina, Provolone, Asiago, and Parmesan. And I'm gonna do about a half a cup of each. I'm just gonna put them all in a big bowl, but then after I mix them, we're gonna reserve a little bit of it for the top, for the topping of this. Which basically, I tried to sneak into my own refrigerator last night <laughs> and eat the first batch of this I made. I had to literally slap myself on the hand and walk away. It's the problem with loving your job. Never feels like work. We, so I mentioned we do a ton of game days, and it was really fun because when we talked about doing this theme with Traeger, I made a bunch of these things for my sons and their friends to try. And the taco skillet dip was a huge hit. They didn't get to try this one. I think I'm going to have to make another batch to share with people because it's so dang delicious. I'm going to get some of the Asiago. We have another question. Oh, I'm so glad. What flavor pellets am I using? I am using the Signature Blend, which I actually ended up using the whole bag. Hickory, maple, and cherry blend. You know, I tend to use a lot of the fr fruit woods a lot. I'll use cherry on its own. I use apple all the time, but I love this blend. And so it's kind of become my go-to for most recipes, unless I am doing something where I want a ton of smoke and I want a heavier wood where you're really gonna taste the flavors of that. So, signature pellets. And of course, these are all for sale on Traeger's website. And you can get them in local stores a lot too. Um, gosh, so many stores near us carry them, like Ace Hardware, a lot of our local hardware stores carry them, Home Depot, so you can get them online or in the stores, um, along with the grills and the other tools I'm using today. I'll be using the spatula primarily, and um, I love these, love them, love them. I'm missing one cheese. There it is, Parmesan. So I just bought grated Parmesan at the store. It doesn't have to be a big fancy hunk of Parmigiano Reggiano. If you like that, you can certainly use it. But um, this recipe is just so dang forgiving. And it's just great to have kind of like the sharper, firm cheeses mixed with the ooey gooey melty cheeses. It's kind of like the perfect combination. OK, so let's get those cheeses out of the way. And I'm just going to use my hands for this. Like I said, I'm not sharing, so I'm not worried about germs today. And I'm going to put what looks like about three quarters of it into this bowl and save the rest for the topping. Yum! And then let's get a spatula. Yeah, we have another question. Oh my gosh, can you soften the cream cheese on the Traeger? Sure you could, sure. But the thing is you wouldn't want it to get like smoky. Well, you could actually, but put it on at like 225, 250 for a couple minutes and see what happens. Give it a try. I'm actually gonna try that. Along with today for the first time, I smoked water to make smoked ice cubes because I thought that was the coolest thing I'd ever heard. So when I do the after hours with Chad Ward over on the Traeger Instagram after this, I will be trying one of my smoked ice cubes for the first time. Um, but yeah, try to soften the cream cheese on there. I think that's a fabulous idea. See how this though, it just comes together so easily because I'd mixed them together and then left it at room temp for probably an hour before this. So that's the base mixture, delicious on its own. And you could add anything you like to that. This is obviously a super classic combination. But one thing I wanted to point out with the recipe, it just calls for a can of artichokes. It doesn't say if they should be seasoned or plain. I just buy the artichokes that are quartered without any seasoning on them because sometimes you can get the marinated ones and they are just loaded with other flavors. They're not for me in this recipe. I want to add kind of my own flavor profile to it. And they can tend to be really salty. So when you take those and you add it to the salt of the cheese, it can be a little bit overwhelming. So I like the plain ones, and I just bought the 15-ounce can. 
that's a theme today. Everything comes in a 15 ounce can and you drain them first. And then I'm just get, gonna give them a rough chop before I put them in. So if you were to scoop it with a chip, you could get a bite of artichoke and it wouldn't break your chip. These are important things, you know? Um, let's just run my knife through it. And if you don't like artichokes, you could certainly use something else. Um, my friend used hearts of palm, which was so good. Uh, a lot of people like adding a crunch to this dip, like water chestnuts would be delicious. You can do spinach, pretty much any vegetable you like that's cooked and easy enough to dig in with. You could do like a roasted bell pepper. That would be delicious and add some great color. I'd love that. Buy even the fire roasted red bell peppers in a jar that you can drain and just cut them up like I'm doing with the artichoke and throw them in there. That'd be great. It's a holiday dip, right? I could do spinach in that, festive. Or you can make it in the colors of your favorite team. <laughs> We're rooting for so many teams right now. I can't keep it all straight between the NBA, MLB, and the NFL. So uh, I think I can maybe, but. Okay, so let's put those in and then I'm gonna add the spinach. The thing I wanted you to see about the spinach is that I had a 10 ounce container of baby spinach leaves, right? So they're triple washed for you. They're ready to go. You don't have any of the dirt on them. Um, but about 10 cups of spinach, when you cook it, turns into this, turns into one cup. So don't be scared. Like I, I sauteed it down in two batches in my pan and uh, because it looks like so much and you just kind of turn it with tongs until it wil wilts for a minute or two and then you get this tiny amount. One thing you want to be really careful of with spinach is that if you buy this frozen kind as well, you know you defrost it and then there's all that water in it. Uh, the same thing happens when you cook it on the cooktop actually. It just gives off a ton of water. So what I like to do is I take a paper towel, like three layers of paper towel, and when I take this off the cooktop, I land it on the paper towel, and you see it's just all the water start to absorb. And when it cools down a little bit, I'll fold it over and kind of like wring it, and all this water comes out. You might have to do it more than once to get all the water, but then you make sure you don't have some watery dip that it's just swimming in, right? We don't want that. So I'm gonna just give this a rough chop as well. The point of dips like this too is that, like I said, depending on what you're serving it on, like if you're serving it with little crackers or a bigger crostini, it's okay if you have some bigger pieces, but with something really small when people are trying to dip their food into it, you want to make sure they can get all of these great flavors in one bite. So a little less rustic than I would normally do. You know, also a lot of people have asked me what I'm doing with dips um, when I have people over now because of COVID and trying to be more aware with social distancing. And here's the best part. You can still make it in one big dish and then you can serve it out for people onto individual plates. So nobody has to worry about touching it or double dipping. <laughs> Not that anybody in my house would, um, but you don't have to worry about any of that. It's just really nice to be able to prepare them in one big thing, right? Or if you're really fine, you could do like individual, you could do something like this size of individual dips and bake them off and serve them for people that way. But um, that's too many dishes for me. So let's add the spinach as well. And then the secret ingredient, which really isn't a secret, but I've got one on the grill as well. I worked with a chef chef the other day. I call him a chef chef because he's a restaurant chef. And even though I went to cooking school, um, I call myself a home cook because all the recipes I write and all the books I write are really for people like me. People who love to cook. They don't want to spend a ton of time in the kitchen. And um, I joke I'd get fired in a restaurant in five minutes. They would kill me for making a mess and everything else. But what I did notice is that um, he cleaned as he went. It was so spotless the whole time. I was so impressed. <laughs> I'm trying to be better about it. Okay, the secret ingredient. The not so secret ingredient, I think it's the first ingredient listed on the recipe, is garlic, garlic cloves. Do you remember when everybody would roast garlic whole like this and then you would rub it on crostini and eat it with yummy things? Well, guess what? It's still delicious and it's back. I think we have a question. What's the drink of the evening? Oh, what's the drink of the evening? So glad you asked. 
doing a very light version of something our friends at Whistle Pig sent. Um, if you like whiskey, it's amazing. But I also love them because they make the best maple syrup I've ever had on the planet, which is put in barrels and you can tell. The flavor is outstanding. So all I did was take a little bit of the whiskey and I just squeezed fresh lemon juice and a tiny splash of the maple syrup. Start it. You can do it over ice in a cocktail shaker and strain it. It's really good that way, actually. Or you can just put it over a little bit of ice. I just want to taste later. People who are real whiskey lovers love the idea of the um, smoked ice cube with it. So I'm doing it more like a science experiment, actually, just for everyone to see how it is. OK, back to the garlic. This is what I did. Most, some recipes call for taking all the cloves apart, taking the skin off the cloves, and then roasting the cloves individually in a bunch of oil. I say, forget it. Look what is just as easy. I cut the top off this, and I'll show you how I did it. And I wrapped the entire thing in some foil. And all I did was put a ton of olive oil on it, not a ton, a tablespoon, and a sprinkling of salt. And I wrapped it in foil so that it can't leak out. And you put it on um, the Traeger for about 40 minutes at 400, and this is what you get. You get this caramelized thing that wasps and bees adore. But look at how easy it is to get the garlic out when you go to finish. You just squeeze with your fingers. You need to let it cool a little bit first. And then all of the cloves just come out. It's like the most satisfying thing. And so instead of having to peel every single clove, yes, your fingers are going to smell like garlic, but they would have anyhow. And you get a really nice yield on this. So I'm just going to squeeze like that. You can see the smaller ones on the sides. You can give it a little squeeze. If you get some paper in there, don't worry about it. And then I am going to, where can I put this? Let's see here. We'll put it in my messy bowl. We also have water down here for my hands. But anyhow, I was trying to show you one that I was roasting on the grill as well, and it needed a little bit more time. But the way you know it's done, yeah, it's still pretty darn hot, is that if you were to poke a regular knife in it, like a dinner knife, it should just really have uh, no pressure when you just can go right into it like that. And this one does have that, but I would like it to get a little darker so that those sugars caramelize more because the more they caramelize, the sweeter the garlic gets and it is spectacular. So let's just hide that one. I'm actually going to pop it back on the grill. You'll notice how quickly I open and close the grill because I want to maintain the temperature of it. And it's one of the reasons I love the ironwood so much. It is you know, it's had this technology for, what, the last two years, year and a half? And the time it takes to bounce back and recover is just, it's remarkable. Like, it's at 387 right now, and I have it set for 400. So even if it drops 50 to 100 degrees, you don't ever have that lag time that we're so used to with um, most grills where it takes a really long time for it to catch up, you know? So, okay, here we are. What else do I need for this? I need a little olive oil. And I need a spoon, because all I'm going to do is kind of mash up this olive oil. And I need a little bit of salt to act like an abrasive, which will make it easier to mash. A fork would be the best tool, but it's inside, so forget it. OK. We'll just use the back of a spoon. And you can use as much or as little as you like. Uh, if you're making it for a party, you're all going down together, right? You're all going to smell like garlic. It's totally worth it. <laughs> it's so delicious and so good for so many of us. So I'm just going to mash it up. And we're going to mix it in with these other awesome ingredients. Okay, let's fold in the... You could also do this, now that I'm thinking about it, you could roast the garlic and you could puree it with everything else, with the um, cream cheese and the mayonnaise and let it just kind of like sit in there for a day and it would be amazing. But putting it in at the last minute is fine as well. Okay, so let's move this up. Oh my gosh, see, I love that this dip's gonna have so much more color and depth to it. And like I said, I'm not trying to pretend like this is health food by any means, but man, that's a lot of spinach in here, so. Um, if you're trying to get some veggies on a game day, make this. Okay. Yeah, I probably would have added the garlic earlier because then it's easier to spread out in the base of the dip, right? So I won't kill anybody with this one. I'm just going to put a little bit in and then we'll move it around. Yeah, we have a question. 
Um, anything, it's so funny because I very rarely smoke things a lot. So I like mesquite, you know, I'll do things like that when I'm working with really big cuts of meat. And um, what I love, whether I'm getting my meat at Snake River or somewhere else like Belcampo here, is that they're beautiful cuts of meat and they don't need a lot. So I, if I'm going to put wood on them like that, I do the most simple seasonings on uh, my meat because I want to taste the flavor of the wood and the meat that I'm eating. So yeah, mesquite. Okay, see how delicious this looks? Oh my gosh. I really like my red pepper idea. I think I'll try that next. Okay, so now we're just gonna load it into a dish that is safe to go on the Traeger. I like to remind people, if you would put your cookware in an oven, you can put it on your Traeger. So obviously, if you're used to cooking with things with plastic handles, you wouldn't wanna do that. But this is oven proof up to probably 500, 600 degrees. So it's great on my Traeger. Oh wait, you know what I wanted to add? was just a little bit of lemon juice to this. I'm gonna show you my lemon trick in the next recipe too. But I think hot sauce would be delicious in this. You just need something to cut the richness and citrus does that. So any vinegar would do, but I think lemon juice with this tastes delightful. Okay, I wonder if you guys know what my trivia question's gonna be if everyone's been paying attention. Who knows if I've mentioned it yet or not. Oh my gosh. So you do this in a smaller dish if you want and have it be higher. Um, I kind of like spreading it out like this because when I put the other cheese on it, it's going to get like crispy, gooey, delicious, and it's got like a ton of surface area for that, okay? Oh my gosh. Aren't we lucky? It's amazing. Okay, get that out of the way. And then let's top it with that extra cheese. And then it's so perfect because by the time I'm done making the other dip, it'll probably be time to take the um, taco dip off. In you go. The fontina and the provolone just give it so much great flavor as well. You know, you can also buy like a four cheese blend that's already done for you and use that instead of buying all of the cheeses separately. Okay, so in it goes. I don't even have my top rack in my ironwood most days because I like to have the space to move in and out, but I can cook so much food on it. It's really kind of the perfect size for me. I think I mentioned this is the 885. So I love this grill and I only bring out my tr pro and timberlines when I am cooking for really large crowds. I love them both, but this is my workhorse. I see you wasp. I see you. Okay. Now for the last dip, the French onion. Wouldn't it be amazing, like if on television, if I put my stuff down there, that there was somebody on the other side who magically cleaned it? <laughs> That's the thing. Uh, this time at home has definitely gotten all of us into the mode of doing our own dishes, right? Okay, so I have one already made that we'll keep out for later. And then get the bowl for serving. And this. Yes, we have another question. Okay, sure. Same question. What pellets do you prefer for a heavier smoke flavor? The question was, what pellets do I prefer for a heavier smoke flavor? I would say mesquite. And uh, I was mentioning that I don't use a lot of heavier woods because um, I don't do a ton of smoking. But things I like to smoke are big cuts of meat. And I think those do really well with a stronger flavored wood. So try mesquite and see what you think. I also mentioned that I don't tend to put a ton of seasonings on my meat if I'm using a heavier wood because I want to taste the meat and I want to taste the smokiness from the wood. So a lot of times I'll use one of our simplest Traeger rubs or salt and pepper, a little bit of olive oil, and that is it. Okay. Let's get this. It's like I'm busted. You all can hear me talking to myself. I just talk to myself all day long when I cook. Okay, here we go. So, oh, I need my onions. 
Okay, so here are my three pounds of onions that I cooked down. See how caramelized they are and gorgeous? And they're just gonna melt in your mouth. It's like French onion soup, right? You add that broth and then it's just yummy. Delicious, tons of deep flavor here. So just by cooking these on the Traeger, you'll be blown away by how much better the flavor is from your dip. Okay, now you wanna see how simple this is? All I did was take sour cream, a little bit of mayonnaise, and um, I'm gonna use some lemon juice and then the onions and the thyme leaves, and boom, that's it. I mean, this is the simplest. Again, you could make this whole thing in advance. You could let, even if you add the onions to it, you could let that sit in the fridge for at least a couple days before you serve it. Just make sure that your onions have cooled before you mix them into this mixture. We don't wanna kind of like cook the mayo sour cream part. Oh my gosh. I promise you, if you try this, your friends will be like, this. how do you do this? Don't tell them it's this easy if you don't want to. Tell them you did this all day long. You had to camp out at your grill to make sure it was perfect. But really, you set it and forget it. The one thing I'll say is that I cooked these onions out here on my Traeger. And when you're working with a really dense amount of food, like these onions in one pan, when you close the lid on this, it's like an oven and there's nowhere for the steam to really escape so like if you were doing this on a cooktop and caramelizing the onions will sweat and then that moisture will burn off like that it's not quite the same here on a Traeger so think of using like a bigger pan I just spread these out on a cookie sheet and so they weren't like sitting in their own liquid as much and it worked really really well okay so we're just making sure that all of those are mixed in really well so no one gets like a 20 pound scoop of the onions. And then uh, we added some thyme leaves. I'm gonna add a few more to this cause I don't see many in there. I think it calls for a teaspoon. I might change my own mind and put in a tablespoon of fresh thyme leaves and a squeeze of lemon juice. And then as always, I'm always talking about tasting as you go and checking the seasoning. So I'll do that as well. Yeah, another question. Okay, so I used the food processor for, did I say for the onions, for the onion dip? I meant for the spinach artichoke where I took the cream cheese and, oh, you know what? They're right. I used it to shred all of my onions. Sorry. So I, you know, I hand slice onions all the time or I have a little mandolin that is a really safe mandolin that OXO makes where it's got this little guard and it just comes with four blades and you just shave them but these were really big onions. And so I used the slicing blade on my food processor. You were right, so that's what I used it for. So I'm a big proponent of just using what you've got. I always say a good cutting board and a good knife is kind of all you need. But when I do find tools I love, uh, I love to tell people about them because they're game changers and I believe in buying things once. And so like my food processor, um, I just, redid my website actually and if you go to amandahaascooks.com I have a shopping page where almost everything I love and adore is on that page and I think the food processor is on there because it's like the blade itself for slicing it can adjust and up to like paper thin to thicker and then when you go to store it it goes all the way flat so you don't have to worry about cutting yourself it's so brilliant so that's what I used it for thanks for asking anything else Could you smoke the lemons? Absolutely you could. I love smoking lemons. I love smoking any citrus on here, um, especially if I'm making a vinaigrette or something like that with them. It's delicious. So please do. I mean, that would add so much depth of flavor. It would be delicious. Any other questions? How long are you cooking the taco dip? The taco dip, I'm, I'm checking out my clock. It's about 25 to 30 minutes to cook the rice, but the grill wasn't that hot yet. And so I um, am letting it go a little bit longer. And just in case we have more inside and my special assistant, uh, you, you are welcome to bring it out. <laughs> that and the artichoke dip. Because the artichoke dip calls for an hour. Um, I think, and depending on how hot your grill is and how many other things you've been doing, it could be anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour. You just obviously want to see it like cheesy, bubbly on top and make sure it's not cold in the middle. Okay, so there is this gorgeous dip and we're going to put it right into this bowl. You know, this would be a great holiday dip because you can put it in its serving dish right away and refrigerate it with saran wrap over the top 
And then all you have to do is bring it out when you're ready to enjoy it. Dip number one. Let's make some room for that. Go ahead and put it right there. Thank you, my friend. Careful for your own good. Okay, so we're gonna get rid of the lemons and then we can finish the other. Any other questions on the onion dip? I'll put a little thyme leaf on top just to look fancy. I'm a huge fan of making things look pretty with very little effort, you know? But I am also a fan of garnishing with whatever is in the recipe. Like it drives me nuts if you go to a restaurant and you order something and they bring a recipe out with an herb on top that has nothing to do with the recipe. And then you bite into it and you're like, I don't get it, right? So I like to give people a little visual hint of what they're gonna taste inside. So that's why I garnish with thyme if I'm using thyme inside the recipe, just like you could do with um, any of the other herbs we tend to use. I forgot to taste it though, hold on. Thank you so much. Oh my gosh, those look so good, everybody. Okay. Thanks, magical assistant. <laughs> I have a friend who many of you might know because she's been helping me with all of these. My friend Sunny and she, um, we are one family through this whole quarantine and she lives down the street. And so she's been helping me graciously with these, even though she has another job, a real job. This is delicious. So I'm going to set it aside while we finish the last. So she came and brought my other recipes out to me. Okay, let's take a look at the others and bring it all together. I want to see how the taco dip is coming along. So let's do that. Of course, when you're working with really heavy pans or any pots and pans on this, you want to be so careful with heat, right? If you ever have a wet cloth or a wet towel, it can transfer heat really quickly and burn you. So we don't want that. So I'm going to be actually, let's just be super smart. I'm going to put some towels out so that we can land them safely on things and Get rid of that. Okay, let's take a look. Yeah, another question. Are there any substitutes for the mayo in these dips? Yeah, so, you know, I'm so glad somebody asked, are there any substitutes for the mayonnaise in this dip? Absolutely, you could use yogurt. I love Greek yogurt as a substitute. I love the tang of it. If you're doing non-dairy things, um, it's a little trickier, but I think that there are some other yogurt alternatives and dairy alternatives that would work great. I'm personally just starting to mess around with them, so DM me and I'll give you some more things to try too. But if you're looking to cut calories and fat, I love substituting the yogurt. And like I said, the recipe I have in my book, The Anti-Inflammation Cookbook, the one with goat cheese and goat cheddar and spinach in it is just a much lighter, lighter version of this dip. Another question? It sounds like it's going to be a funny one. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad somebody asked, you know, because normally I show this as I'm spilling my taco dip. Let me let that sit for a second and I'll show you. Somebody said I made it look really easy that I was taking the thyme leaves off their stems. So here's a trick. There are only a few herbs with like really woody stems where they're firm like this thyme and rosemary, right? Rosemary is like really strong. So all you do is you take a stem and you pull the leaves in the opposite direction. So let me take some off here and show you. Okay, this is so fun. These are things that I can geek out on when I'm home alone. Okay, so can you see, I don't know in the camera how the leaves are going up. So you just pull in the opposite direction. Boom. And look at, you have cute little thyme leaves. And if there's a little bit of the stalk left, of the stem, it's probably the soft part, so you don't have to worry that much. But yeah, try it with rosemary too. It's much easier to learn on rosemary. You just, the leaves go this way and you pull them the opposite way. And then a lot of people use um, the stems as skewers for things. And you get all that gorgeous rosemary smell when you grill things. It's actually a really fun trick. Okay, let's, moment of truth with the taco dip, because let's see if it's done. I'm not sure if the temp was high enough. If not, we have a stand-in. Fresh off my other Traeger. Mm, I think it's going to need a little more time, but I want to show you what it looks like so you know. Mm -hmm. So temperature is really important on this one. And I think you heard me say that I turned it up from 350 to 400. I should have had it on 400 the whole time because all of this liquid should be gone, right? 
So when the rice is cooked through, it won't have a bite, and all of that liquid gets absorbed. So now I'm gonna show you what the finished product should look like. This probably has another 10 minutes on it. Again, if I'd started out at the right temperature, you can definitely count on it taking more like 30 to 40 minutes total. Back on it goes. Artichoke dip's still going as well, so I'm gonna bring out another substitute of that one. We're just gonna do a little TV magic, do a little Facebook magic here. Um, I'm so curious what everybody likes to make for game days. Like I said, I did wings. We've done ribs a million times, but I am all for these dips. Okay, I'm gonna get these here. Let me bring them over. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this is insane. Check it out. <laughs> I mean, come on. This went, when I had some friends over to taste it, the boys ate it literally in 10 minutes. This whole thing was gone. But um, how much fun is that? So there is that one. And then you know what I didn't bring out? I didn't bring out sour cream or crema, but you can certainly put some on top. It's almost like a seven layer dip, right? And let people scoop a little bit of that too. And then um, I'm just gonna put some green onion on it. And then bring it forward so we can make room for everything. Then we've got this gorgeous French onion dip, yum. And last but not least, I can show you what the artichoke dip looks like on the grill right now. It's probably gonna be another 15 to 20 minutes. Can you see it doesn't have enough color yet? But I'm gonna show you what it looks like when there is enough color. So one sec. Oh my gosh. Ta-da! <laughs> can you believe that like my kids aren't even at my house right now? Look at all of this food. This is crazy. Who's playing a game tonight? There's gotta be an NFL game or something going on where I can um, share this food with people. But now I'm gonna bring out all the things we love to serve with it. So let's take a look. We need a drum roll. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Okay. So all of our favorite things here with this dip. And yes, I cook really healthy food, but guess what? Nothing tastes better <laughs> with this dip than like the Frito scoops or some thick corn chip that allows you to grab it. I think that rice is stuck in my throat right now. So the coolest part about this is that you can use any veggies you want, any chips you like, it's totally up to you. And with the spinach artichoke, it would be really great with crostinis if you wanted to grill some French bread like that, or just heat up a loaf of French bread and let people tear it off and enjoy it with the dip. So with the French onion, I would do any of these things. I would actually do the sweet potato chips with it. We cut the carrots in on a little bias like this because you know when you have big carrot sticks like this and you go to dunk, you don't get much of the dip on it and we're not obviously double dipping, right? So I kind of love the idea of cutting the carrots in a different shape so you get a ton of the dip on the carrot. Um, but we have kettle chips, we have the sweet potato chips, and we have the old school Fritos scoopers on here. I did some carrots, celery, and different colors of bell peppers so we all have some color to choose from. And that is our amazing dip spread. Easy, right? Even if you wanted to do just one of them, it's such a fun thing to do. And like I said, you can do them the day before or you can do it the morning of, let them sit in the refrigerator until you're ready to put them on the Traeger and you're good to go. So I have to try things first, right? And then we're going to do our trivia question. We're going to find out who's going to win these Traeger flags and the gorgeous t-shirts from Hannah Eddy designed for uh, breast cancer awareness month and our friends at b4bc so let's taste and then i'll ask the question no i should ask the question right now while i taste because you guys have to go answer as fast as you can in facebook okay so my question it's hard what are the four cheeses i used to make the artichoke spinach dip go what are the four cheeses i used to make the artichoke spinach dip can you name them just name all four and the first 10 people who get it right will be our winners and we will DM you. I think we might announce it too when I go over to the Traeger Grills 
um, app or Instagram feed with Chad Ward, and I'll name the winners if we've got 10 winners when we do that, which will start at like 15 minutes after the hour, okay? Um, I'm also doing a giveaway on my own feed tonight. I haven't announced it yet, but you're welcome to hop over to Amanda Haas Cooks to see what that's about, because I'm going to be including somebody else who's a big Traeger user as well. Okay, now while you're all typing, I'm going to start eating. Let's see here. I'm just going to try a couple different combos. I love this dip. Look at the onion to dip to like the creamy ratio. Oh, all onion. Love it. This is almost health food. <laughs> Mm. We have another question. Yes. Uh, for someone who's allergic to garlic, is there something better to use as a garlic substitute? If they could eat onions or shallots, if someone's allergic to garlic, could you substitute something? Absolutely. You could use shallot. That would be really great. Or you can focus on other flavors that maybe um, wouldn't be brought out normally. Like you could do like a hot sauce or something to bring some spice into it. You could also, if you wanted to put a spin on this, use some chipotle, which would be amazing too. Chipotle and adobo, if you just mixed a little of the paste in, oh, it'd be delicious. Okay, I'm just moving my way around. Mm-hmm. Question <laughs> with my mouth full. I'm gonna get a spoon. What is your favorite dish to cook on the Traeger? Oh, I love this question because it changes. What is my favorite dish to cook on the Traeger? Sunny, do you have a favorite dish I make on the Traeger? My ribs. My, isn't that funny that, I mean, we are, I mean, we have the best pitmasters in the world working at Traeger, and my family wants my ribs. They clearly have not had anybody else's. But apple pie. apple pie. My son Connor, on his birthday, I make him whatever he wants, and it's usually an apple pie, ribs, and a homemade mac and cheese on the grill. I like my skirt steak with chimichurri sauce. Oops. Um, I love my, oh, what am I saying? I'm known for, this is crazy, my curried roasted cauliflower yeah. because I served it at this Traeger party with all of us in one place in Salt Lake. And we had had so much meat that was so good. And everyone's like, oh my gosh, this cauliflower is delicious. So look that up. It's on the app actually. And I teach you how to make it, curry roasted cauliflower. It's delicious. And if your friends and family and children don't eat cauliflower, it'll change their minds. I promise you. Mm. Mm hmm. For game day, who is your team? Okay, for game day, who is my team? Let's talk basketball first. Uh, I live in the East Bay of San Francisco. I am a Warriors fan, true and true. Right now, though, we with the Lakers and um, the Heat in it. I think it's super fun that the Miami Heat made it all the way. So I've my my heart's not really in it. I just next year Warriors, watch out. NFL. Um, let's say 49ers, right? Okay, they're the home team. I don't watch a lot of football because I'm always cooking while my kids are into it. And they are so into fantasy football that I'm more about like, how did your players do? So I'll go to any pro game that somebody invites me to or any college game. I love going to athletic events. Let's say 49ers. Um, baseball, I can go Giants and A's. And that's not because I live in the East Bay. I live in the city too. And I just love supporting our local teams. So those are my teams. Mm, mm -hmm. I'm going to have one last bite. And then we can ask Austin if he has enough winners. I guess I won't even give the answer. Maybe we'll put it up on Traeger later. Once we have our winners, who knows? This one sat a little bit, so the cheese is a little less ooey gooey. This wasp is fighting me for it. But I still am going to get to taste all of this yumminess. Sunny, this is your dream come true. It's basically like nachos. Mmm, so good, so easy. Another question? Yes. Okay. What is your favorite Traeger grill? What is my favorite Traeger grill? Um, I love them all for many reasons, but I think that somebody's setting me up for this question because I haven't mentioned her once. The pig grill. <laughs> Can you all see this over here? This is my favorite grill. I use my iron wood the most, but I have this grill literally just to like hang out with me in the backyard while I cook on all the other triggers. Her name is Poppy. She was named by an old friend of mine. We had a naming contest 
and she's adorable and she is such a conversation piece, you know? So um, I have to say, Poppy, the Pink Pig Grill is my favorite grill. Yes, it works. Yes, you can order them. It's hilarious and amazing. And um, I'll put up a story with her so you can see all of her features and benefits later. But Poppy the Pig is my favorite, no question. For functionality, Ironwood all the way. Love it. It has all of the things I need. Like you, it, the app works on it, which it does with most of them now. Um, I've got the pellet sensor to tell me when my pellets are low. I love how the thermometer, um, the instant read thermometer connects to it. It's got enough space for me. It's heavy enough. It is a workhorse. And so I love it. I really do. Poppy, we're never going to find out if she's a workhorse because I can't bear to like put pork chops on her. That's just rude. <laughs> we have enough winners. So I'm allowed to say what the answers are. Let's see if I remember what four cheeses I put on it. Are we ready? Parmesan, Asiago, Provolone, Fontina. Those were the four cheeses I used. Sound good? Well, this has been super fun. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you will head over to Traeger Grill's Instagram feed where you can find out about all the other game day activities we have going on and contests like who's got the best looking dip. You can enter that, I think, until Tuesday and talk with Chad and me at 15 past the hour. We'll recap this, have a little nightcap and spend some more time with you and answer more questions. So thank you for having me as always and goodbye from the Bay Area. See you soon.